today we're going to do some arterial blood gases and some neonatal vent settings. This is for some training, some quarterly training for nurses in our NICU. So we're going to go over some of these blood gases, changes in the vent settings, and then I have three questions at the end that you'll need to answer for your educational uh, purposes on that one. So let's go over a blood gas first. We have a term neonate over here on a ventilator. I'm going to give you the first blood gas. So 7.2752, uh, let's say 70 and 24. So if we remember this, uh, this one's going to be pH, PCO2, PO2, and bicarbonate. So we got, we got all those three different ones uh, kind of divided by slashes here. And we're going to go through and give the first reading for this blood gas. This is what... If you were taking a arterial blood gas test, you need to know this kind of stuff. So I go through and just call each one of them what they are. This is acid. This is acid. This is, we're going to call it normal in this case, and this is normal. So if we're going to name this blood gas, we're going to do it backwards always. So you got what your pH says here. So this is acidosis. You need to watch some of my other videos. So I'll go over this a little bit um, more involved, um, this naming system. So acidosis goes here which one are we gonna blame it on the respiratory side or the bot or the, the the metabolic side in this case since these match acidosis we're gonna say respiratory and are we getting help from this side no so this is uncompensated respiratory acidosis well what the heck does that mean we're having a problem with our co2 co2 is too high we in this case are not ventilating well that's really terrible writing but we're not ventilating well so when you hear the term ventilation you always think of co2 it's not getting air in it's getting air out so let's go over to the vent settings and look at some ventilatory type of parameters so here's our vent settings simv respiratory rate of 40 inspiratory pressure of 28 pressure support of six and peep of five so since i'm a guy i like to draw pictures let's draw this quick picture of a scalar waveform for this vent. Um, we're going to be running, let's say this is five right here. Um, 40 times a minute, we're going to trigger. We're going to go up to 28 and come back down. 28 and come back down. 28 and come back down. So in these cases, uh, 28 is our IP. Five is our PEEP. And then we get some pressure support in here. But these, you can see that the patient's respiratory rate is 42, just to make all my math really easy. So uh, 40 breaths per minute. So a couple things that can affect the CO2. Respiratory rate. Of course, if I change the respiratory rate and I do more than 40 per minute, I'm going to hit this peak more often. Therefore, I'm going to get more air in and then subsequently more air out. So if you just look at this, this is the best way to look at oxygenation and ventilation. Look at these peaks. And then we'll talk about this. That's the oxygenation portion down here. So if I increase the area or the total area per minute of these, it's going to decrease my CO2. So if I add more breaths in here like this, that's going to increase the area, therefore decrease my CO2. So respiratory rate is a good one. Another one that you look at is inspiratory pressure because instead of hitting 28, I might go up to 30. Well, that's kind of high, but in this case, maybe it's warranted. So if we go up to 30, you see we increase the area of that. And with pressure control ventilation, inspiratory pressure can change somebody's CO2. But what does inspiratory pressure do? It's directly related to their exhale tidal volume. So tidal volume is one of those. VTE is exhale tidal volume. So that is one of the parameters that can definitely change CO2. You can use any of those. Um, if you're near your top end on your inspiratory pressure, I would go to the respiratory rate. If your respiratory pressure is low on the lower end of normal for your gestational age and whatnot, I would go to increase inspiratory pressure. The fastest parameter that's going to change your CO2 is respiratory rate. So, because if you have more peaks, that's more area, and you're going to decrease your CO2 faster. That's what's needed in this case. Not a lot of other changes. All right, ABG number two. Okay. 
Okay, ABG number two, we're going to say 7.38. 42, 40. This is arterial study. I need to make sure I say that. This is an arterial blood gas. So not a capillary gas. So we are going to look at the PO2. It is significant. In the capillary gas, you cannot look at PO2 levels, but it is good for acid-base balance, capillary gases are. So this is arterial. So this is normal, normal, double arrow low, normal. So blood gas, acid-base balance-wise, is absolutely normal. We have an oxygenation issue. So let's say we're running these settings over here. Well, one thing I didn't put up here was FiO2. So let's say it was a 40%. So 40%, 0 0.40. Um, what changes might we make with this? A couple different ones. Uh, the quick and easiest one is FiO2. Now, go up by small amounts on FiO2. What I'd also like to know with this is, what is my SaO2? Because that comes on a blood gas. So that's your oxygen saturation. So let's say that was about 84%. Okay, so SaO2 is always going to be less than SpO2. That's a whole different talk, but SpO2 is actually the one you get on the fingers. So um, SpO2 might be 88. SaO2, so actually oxygen bound to it, oxyhemoglobin. And I like to think of this as oxyhemoglobin bound is 84, but let's say this one's 88. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase FiO2 in this case up maybe to 0.45. Let it normalize for about 30 minutes and see what your, your saturation is and use that as a training tool. The big key is once you get to the magic number of 0 0.60, Stop using FiO2. Using FiO2 is above 0 0.60 to 1.0 or 100%. Uh, if you start getting in those cases, that usually means, and you're increasing past this, they have some kind of refractory hypoxemia. You need not just to add oxygen to the alveoli. Don't just throw extra oxygen in there. You need to change some settings to maybe recruit some more collapsed alveoli. So. So what you can do is you're going to change something else. So for oxygenation, we're going to go FiO2 first, up to about 60. After that, or even when you start getting close to 60, you need to change something else. PEEP is the big one, positive end expiratory pressure. Go up gently on this in the neonatal world. Uh, but when you go in, that will the extra pressure may help to recruit alveoli and then help your oxygenation because you got to have recruited alveoli to help oxygenate. Oxygenation is all about getting the air in, but the one main problem with oxygenation is there is a layer here between the alveoli and the bloodstream, nine different layers of tissue that that has to get through. Any kind of inflammation and other disease processes can cause problem with diffusion across that layer. So um, it's really important that um, once you start getting to this 60% range that you start changing things, maybe to recruit alveoli or whatever it might take. Next blood gas. Okay, so this let's let's read this blood gas. This is arterial. This is not good. So we're gonna go through this acid, acid, because it's above 45. Uh, this is low, and then this is acid. In this case, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna name it backwards. We're gonna say acidosis here. Acidosis. Well, who do we blame it on? Respiratory or metabolic? Actually, both. So I call it a combined acidosis also called a mixed acidosis, also called frowny face. Not good. So uh, that means the system is not working the way it should be. Um, which one are we going to deal with first on this ventilator? Well, absolutely first thing to deal with is going to be ventilation. We already talked about that. What are we going to change? We're going to increase inspiratory pressure or we're going to increase respiratory rate. If you increase ventilation, usually subsequently oxygenation will improve. You 
you don't necessarily improve oxygenation and then it will improve, improve ventilation. Ventilation is the key. So it's the one you always start with. So we're gonna have ventilate first, increase IP, increase respiratory rate, monitor this part. Then we need to find the reason why our bicarb is low. Now it's not super low and it's probably not enough to cause a major problem on its own if we get the patient ventilated, but the combination of two acids really drop your pH fast. And that's why we have such a dramatic pH. So in this case, you're gonna in the increase the inspiratory pressure, the respiratory rate. What's that gonna do? Well, that's the, that's the first question. So if I increase the inspiratory pressure, this value should also increase. I want to say this patient value should also increase. So right here, there's, there's two answers for this and I'll give them to you. Actually, I won't give them to you. So you'll have to figure that out on your own. So if increased inspiratory pressure, this patient value should increase. So there's two of them. Two of them, you should know those. Well, one's kind of hard, but that's okay. So uh, let's say the next one is, which setting, in, what settings increase oxygenation? So we have two main settings that increase oxygenation. And there is a third, which is an extra credit point. that only my respiratory therapist, I hope my respiratory therapist can get this one. So there is a third patient setting that could increase um, oxygenation. And then, the, and then question number three is going to be, Which acidosis is easiest to treat? And then when I say easiest, I mean fastest to treat. So which type? We have two. We have metabolic and respiratory. So which one is that? That last was really simple. So anyway, uh, those are your three questions. I hope this was um, a good learning experience for you. Thanks.